Okay. Yeah. All right. My name is David Zucker. I help Tim, our moderator, out here at the College of Complexes. All right. Most of you already know the rules, one fool at a time. You are familiar with the, the, the no personal attacks. You're familiar with that there will be a $3 tuition charge uh, to defray the cost of it. Just, 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 just keep talking. I'll get that. The cost of the expenses of the college. And also, for those of us who are here at the restaurant, there will be a food and drink purchase required so that we can help keep the restaurant going. Uh, so you might as well have dinner or get something else to eat or drink here. Thank you. Just came off. I'll fix that at some point. Our format we're supposed to be through with is we will have announcements. Charlie will probably give us details of the upcoming programs. Anyone else who has announcements of community interest can present that. And our speaker will talk for about an hour or so on tonight's topic. Then we will have questions and answers, which by jeopardy must be in that form. Give the speeches for the next segment the rebuttals, at which point Tim will portion out the time. Uh, so that each person can rebut the speaker and talk about whatever else they want to for uh, a few minutes or so. And then the last, and the speaker will get the last word. Start the announcements. Start the announcements. All right. Now then, announcements. Charlie, did you want to talk about upcoming programs? Yeah, I will. Okay. Tim, you want to call up the uh, screen? What I'm doing right now, Charlie. Okay, just, just, just stay there, David. Stay okay, there. I want to welcome everyone to meeting stay. number three thousand six hundred ninety-five of the College of Complexes, the playground for people who think. First of all, you'll see we will soon see at the center top of the page is a Google email group which you are all recommended to join to get an announcement of the upcoming programs, which hopefully will start on time in the future. We also have a meetup group, which functions much in the same way. We try to keep traffic down on those so you won't be spammed to any considerable extent. Um, also, if you scroll down a little bit on the page, You'll see in the center right there where it says topics of, below topics of upcoming meetings. I posted all sorts of links to hand. Stop scrolling, please. You scrolled away from it. Up here? There. Oh. Yeah. Leave it there, please. Uh, you'll see all sorts of uh, handouts and slide presentations <clears throat> and a variety of things. Try to keep them up there for a while. And uh, so if you missed something or you wanted a handout or look for slide PowerPoint presentations, uh, resolution there is on, on previous topics, you'll find them there uh, at least for a certain period of time and then I'll be taking them down. Now, although I am not, okay, first of all, everyone please mute during the presentation. Put a big red X over your microphone. Thank you. Uh, and although I'm not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement for upcoming programs. On December the 10th, next Saturday, we'll be welcoming sometimes college regular Rose Gomez. Uh, and she'll be talking about representing uh, Illinois Solar for All. So we're going to be looking at clean energy topics. Uh, the uh, following that uh, on December the 17th, Tim was putting together a special Christmas program. His work is still in progress on that. Going to be doing so that'll be on December the 17th. All right, it's good. After that, if well, you're not ready, be I'm quiet. All the L's are on strike. You have nothing to tell us about the program. 
All right, December the 24th uh, and the 31st, we will be closed in, in, in accordance with the holidays and the restaurant. So December the 24th and 31st closed. Also, uh, you'll see I've got a prepare something there called the urine review. You might want to look at that page. It gives a listing of all the programs that are in the lecture library. Okay, transitioning into uh, January 7th, uh, we will have an open microphone. I'm arranging keynote speakers. I already have two prospective speakers to talk about the year in the view. And we're looking for your predictions for the coming year. What do you think's gonna happen? Will the war end? Uh, who will get elected? What's going to happen in Congress, uh, and so forth. So uh, I've got two speakers in line already. If you'd like to be a keynote speaker, scoot me a line. You talk for about 10 minutes or so to generate the conversation. That's on January the 7th. On January the 14th, Jan Lee will be returning with another scholarly presentation looking at China in a first perspective she's going to be bringing usually well-planned and executed programs on the 14th. Our next open dates are January 14th, January 21st and 28th. Okay, Tim, what are you gonna talk about on the 17th? I'm bringing a friend of mine and we're gonna be doing uh, with the resolution of the railroad strike by Congress, will they be able to solve the upcoming strike between the elves and Santa Claus Inc? We're going to have a special speaker who's going to represent the elves and I'm going to represent Santa Claus Inc. It's going to be more of a fictitious affair, but we're going to be members of Congress during that thing, trying to see if we need to intervene in the upcoming elves strike. All right. So we're looking forward to it. Okay. So that's about it. And thank you. Take it away to any other announcements from the community. All right, Andy, get up there if you want to speak. Go ahead. All right. All right, Dave, go ahead and introduce Charlie and we'll All let right, him go. Any more announcements? All right, hearing none, we're going to move on now to our speaker. Rolo Charlie Paydock, the uh, columnist coordinator, who's helped keep the college running for many years. Now he's going to talk, I believe, about the changes needed in U.S. holidays and why we need a Department of Celebration. So give it up for our coordinator, Charlie Paydock. All right, Charlie, or go ahead, share your speech. Share your uh, screen. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for coming out tonight or in one fashion or another. And we're again, I apologize on behalf of the college for our so much tardiness and getting our apparatus. It's a big job to get set up uh, each week. Okay, uh, anyhow, why do we need new North holidays? And we should start all over again. That's what I say. We just have to start all over again. And there's, we'll go through this uh, and setting up. This is, a, as I say, the, uh, for the presentation, especially for the College of Complexes. Um, now here's an outline of what I will be talking about. There are four parts. The history of holidays in general, we'll look at an analysis of current US celebrations. The third part is, we'll take a very brief look at adoption. The first step is adoption of a fixed calendar. And then the final part are my suggestions to enhance our culture by having new holiday schedule. I've been studying holidays for some reason, uh, culturally, uh, from an anthropological perspective for a number of years. I don't know precisely why, but I have a general interest in what, a, what precipitated people to celebrate, make special occasions. Okay, now, first of all, we have to understand that the holidays are in fact very important and central to our cultures. 
uh, leisure is the basis of culture. Uh, and it's not just an idle affirmation. Uh, the word leisure, from the word leisure in Greek, we get the word school. Uh, now I stayed many years in college because I realized staying in school was, for me, leisurely compared to having to work. So, but leisure is, in fact, the basis of culture. And that's why this is, a, uh, and uh, it's now, we have to understand now, when I, uh, we look at our schedule, many holidays are celebrated well, I just kind of no discernible reason whatsoever. And that that there's no utilitarian application here. Another reason we must look at this, this is very important because to anybody who looks around, there's signs of cultural decline in our culture. Increased indifference, insolvent, ineffective government, superficiality is everywhere, no consistent arguments against violence. Entitlement philosophies, you find them among the young elected leaders with no moral authority um, and base and immoral entertainment. That's, that's everywhere. And the final indicator of the demise of a civilization is the future of a, its people to see what's happening. And I'm going to let you see what's happening tonight, folks. Okay, now some of the things I looked at this. I was saying, there's an indication. This guy wanted to be president of the United States. And he said, welders make more money than philosophers. So we need more welders and less philosophers. Are you kidding me? You got to be kidding me. This guy wanted to be president. The other thing that's going on is cultural appropriation. It's the what holidays we have. We'll see many examples that parties which are, I don't think, for self reasons of self-interest entirely and corporate gain and profitability have appropriated these holidays. So they've lost any or all meaning they may have had. Now, going back in the past, I finally discovered that they had at least one festival each month. Uh, the Europeans didn't have the modern technology and festivals among the few things they could enjoy. Um, they're usually agricultural celebrations, time to the crop cycles. Below that, just a little discussion there that most of the time they didn't eat white bread and white black bread. And so this it might be an occasion to have a little bit of special meal uh, with family and friends. Uh, and did something other than uh, bread and vegetables uh, on that. Now, the medieval peasants, I've known this for some time, had more leisure time than we do now. This is amazing. Uh, a thousand years ago, they actually had more leisure time than we do, despite automation. I guess that shows you what capitalism has done to us. Sundays were labor free, and after the plowing and so forth, there was rest period. There were countless numbers of religious holidays. I've read figures in excess of 200 uh, and things like that. Weddings would mean a week off uh, to celebrate the quaff ale. And then on occasion, uh, one troops of entertainers might come to your town. Also, sporting events were held, such as on May Day, there were sporting events. Uh, in particular in Great Britain on May Day. Um, and forward to the 21st century, the US is the only advanced country with no national vacation policy whatsoever. Americans must keep working through public holidays and often, this is true, uh, vacation days go unused. Um, so this is just some photos I was, you can see, uh, the extent to which they had enjoyable times in the Middle Ages. You can see that they usually can focused around dancing around, having a good time, okay, taking set. it easy. Um, okay, another little, there's some factual information. There are 250 work days usually in a year, 
2,080 hours. Absenteeism from work for, this is according to Bureau of Labor Statistics, for full-time workers is less than 2.8%. 70% of the American households, both people are working. What's the other out effect does this have on the nuclear and extended family? Uh, also, the U.S. does not have any law whatsoever setting a limit on the maximum length of the work, work week. Uh, and, of course, there are no federal laws requiring sick day days. Okay. Now, many of the holidays, of course, are religion in origin. We'll see that. However, these no longer have any relevance in a secular modern society. Um, we do have effective in this nation a separation of church and state. There has been a balance of accommodation in this regard. However, I think this is not, not going to continue very long. One reason is you're having new religious presence here, such as Muslim minorities who are demanding equitable treatment regarding school closures uh, and on their holidays uh, at the end of Ramadan uh, or the Feast of the Sacrifice. So there's going to be some controversy regarding uh, equitability if you want to maintain religion as the basis of holidays. Uh, here's some other facts here. Uh, it's causing cultural problems. One university even said that the colors red and green should not be used, that they, they, they do not reflect an inclusive, an inclusive holiday spirit. I don't know what that means, but they, apparently the administrators of that school enforced the rule to prohibit red and green decorations. Um, I don't. Uh, and down below that, there is a community that put a rule prohibiting uh, ordinance regulating. They didn't want to have people going around Christmas caroling. Uh, so the um, uh, uh, Pioneers, I've always liked to remark on this, the pioneers didn't waste time taking days off because they were too busy building the nation. That doesn't mean I'm averse to holidays, but uh, we are in fact fulfilling the, uh, their requirements. Uh, we're working harder than the pioneers, I think. Now here's just some little things about what is a holiday. Define your terms, they say. Define your terms, sir. Okay, I will. The holiday is the day set aside by custom or law to suspend normal activities or reduce them. Uh, you allow individuals to celebrate or to commemorate an event or tradition of significance. Uh, they can be designated by governments, religious institutions, or other organizations, as we shall see. Um, and the extent to which activities are reduced depends, of course, a very large measure on personal just local custom or personal choice. So that's what I mean. We can affect changes in this and authorize to do so within this framework. A uh, little one more fact, and then we'll be done with this. But the Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938 does not require payment uh, for time not work uh, on holidays. It does not re re require that. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And these uh, benefits are generally a matter of an agreement. Um, I think something obviously should be done in that regard to ensure that uh, Walmart doesn't cheat its people like they're prone to do. Um, that's my last one on a lot of facts. Uh, there are holidays that have been abolished uh, over time. You used to have something called the Battle of New Orleans Day. Uh, in 68, we went to this holiday mode to extend the weekend. Uh, but the 4th of July is the only 
holiday that does not move. Um, the president, uh, he has the authority to declare other holidays. I'm not certain if they have, but they still have that authority. And by the way, the 1999, uh, the courts have ruled uh, that religious holidays do not violate the Establishment Clause of the Constitution. Um, so thematic things, religion-based, um, still can take place. I came across this act in order to become a citizen of the United States. You had to have a knowledge of its holidays. One of the questions, number 99 and 100, are um, regarding the holidays of the United States. So they regarded as essential knowledge uh, in order to be a qualified citizen. Uh, this is one that's been kicked around for a long time. I think it's a good idea. The proposal to make uh, the first day of stay in November an election day. I think this really, if we're going to look at uh, voting measures, uh, this is one, let's make this a regular uh, thing that we know precisely when it is and can plan around it accordingly uh, to exercise a franchise. Okay, just some pictures of the many ways around the world holidays take on a very colorful aspect. I like this, this is a pretty fancy. People seemingly like to make fancy costumes. They're really kind of fun, nice, and like this in China, the dragon dance going up and down the street. Uh, there's a multitude of holidays from Asia. There you see uh, in Latin America and Stonehenge as well. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, the Druids. Um, and there's also a feast for monkeys put on uh, in, in Malaysia. So monkeys get uh, all kinds of grub, which is nice, they kind of enjoy having the monkeys and give them their own day. And there you can see they put out all sorts of fancy foods for their little monkey friends. Okay, I looked at what goes on in socialist countries. What are they celebrating there? Um, and we can get some idea. They also have a Labor Day. They have, they have two like Liberation Independence Day uh, the Harvest Moon Festival, I think, is one that dates back uh, and formation of the party. As you can see, they, the people are very orderly. They take the holiday seriously. They put on their best clothes. They have wonderful cultural, wonderful cultural events. You can see here, young ladies singing songs, uh, playing instruments. Oh, they have these huge gatherings uh, um, and dances, accordion, some musical recitals. That's what I mean. This is really nice. We could do things like that here. Why not? Uh, you have the young people get together, do a little practicing. You, you know, see the young people. That's good. They're engaged in constructive activities, and they enjoy it, and we enjoy it. There you see another thing. I, nice. Per, this is pretty cool. And look at this. There you go. That instills some uh, no concept of your country and where it's worth. But instead, what do we got going on in the United States? This is how the young people here are celebrating in free market capitalist countries, intoxicated or or Devil's Day, like in Detroit. They, they go around wrecking everything, stealing or breaking. Uh, talk about need for reform. Come on, right there. I also looked at social country. I like to say Li Feng. Uh, he was a young man in the army, and he usually sets an example for the young people of China uh, on how they should conduct themselves. He tragically lost his life in an accident, but they still celebrate. He really was a good guy. As you can see, here's a little cartoon about some kids who secretly came and hung the laundry up for the old lady. They did, she didn't even know it. They snuck in and 
did some work for her. That's real nice. The other things they do, uh, they they were at the trains and stations, and they had lectures on the importance of good manners when traveling on public transit. Now, why don't we have something like that here? What do they do on public transit in the States? They rob you. They take your cell phone. <laughs> and we have to put police up. What's going on here? There's another one there. Oh, I won't get into this. But, okay, this is what's going on there. Um, the, here, now we got to look at our own holidays. Uh, they're, they're designated over time. They're a haphazard collection of events. There's no oversight if the holiday has any meaning, if it's lost its meaning. They, many of them are a poor reflection on our country. We saw that in those illustrations there. They're spaced unevenly wherever they could find it. Like, oh, I've seen that before. Okay, boom, boom, duck and dive in. Take one terrorist out. Next, get the AK, go Rambo. Take out all the fucking all right, get rid Jeez. of this guy. Making, that's what I mean. That's why we need new national holidays, because we got too many idiots. Um, and there's an unequal participation by people. That's, a, that's another thing in there. It's a question. I'm suggesting we have a U.S. Department of Celebrations maintain the calendar. They can revise it each year. Why not? We don't have to have the same holidays every year. We can provide grants for certain uh, culture performances uh, and benefit uh, nonprofit cultural organizations, uh, creative arts, the arts. And, um, and we also got to do some things to correct the uh, labor laws to enable full participation by every one. There you can see that's the kind of holiday that Chuck approves. Okay, we have to end corporate control of culture. Uh, it's something like Christmas is nothing but getting customers. And the holidays, we have to restore authenticity, meaning and stuff. I got nothing against Christmas, but it, it certainly has no authenticity whatsoever, this rabid consumerism that goes on. You can see this here in the social media, uh, the various, uh, they certainly have taken advantage of this uh, as their marketing opportunities. You you can't use your computer without uh, their control over your spending habits. And you can see here, even when you log in, holidays take on some importance. Anybody logs into Google search engines, um, various holidays have gotten things of course the standard feature of home uh, is uh the cards which people send on the occasions not a bad idea and really kind of nice my sister likes to do this she has all sorts of cards for all occasions and does it all the time a bit more assiduously uh than i do now since i'm not in the office all the time Another problem on holidays is that, that we need to look at seriously balancing peak and off-peak travel. Um, perhaps we could uh, do this in seasons when travel is per permissible. Uh, people still are probably going to want to congregate and see one another. That's understandable. However, there are other methods we could approach it to. We certainly don't want what's going on in China, China, where there is enormous conflict and uh, problems regarding infinite travel, all the entire and half the nation on one day, uh, something like that certainly merits correction. As a librarian, this is a standard reference book. If you want to look up holidays, uh, Chases has been around for many years, and that tells you what celebrations are coming up during any given year. I looked it up for the calendar for the college complexes to see if there are any occasions we we should mark during the year uh, at the college complexes. Here's some of the silly things that people are celebrating these days. Leif Erikson Day, I don't know. I guess there are a lot of Swedes and Norwegians or I wasn't aware of it. Truman Day, uh, maybe in Missouri, I guess. 
Lyndon Baines Johnson Day? I um, I guess, you know. Um, Pan American Aviation Day? <laughs> I, I'm not certain what that is to celebrate. I just looked at one day in general, uh, what people are celebrating right now. You got some wonderful things like Poinsettia Day and National Dangling Day. This was the day somebody invented. So you called up people you haven't heard from in a while. Not a bad idea. I don't know if it merits our national holiday altogether. <laughs> but now we're going to look very quickly at our current calendar and what Americans are doing. I'm going to speed through this. We all know what are the pros and cons of our current holidays. Now compare this, I ask you, to those photos that I showed you of the young people in socialist nations. Just as a note of comparison. Okay, okay. here we're going to look at American holidays. I just saw an email about this. Yeah, oh, we've all got a national clean out your refrigerator day. New Year's holiday. I have no idea what we need a holiday uh, for intoxication all night. We're not celebrating anything. We're really not. I, I, I change the calendars because it's not. I, I was like, oh, this is a why. I, I just for some I saw this. The other yep. National Dress Dress Up Your Pet Day. Well, <laughs> my cats don't like getting dressed up for anything. They those two guys don't like it. Oops, uh, what happened here? <laughs> Uh, I, oops, there we go. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, regarding New Year's, uh, this is a purely pagan holiday. Actually, all the time, New Year's was always uh, around considered Easter on March 15th. Um, people, I have no idea why we're celebrating it. And Roman said you should have a drink. Uh, to further your life, It'll, each drink you add, you will live one year longer. I don't know if we need Roman holidays. There's now there's a certain bit of controversy, of course, with Martin Luther King's Day, because in certain parts of the nation, they're still celebrating uh, Robert E. Lee Day and Confederate Memorial Day or Lee Jackson Day. So Certain states and a number of them are certainly have taken reluctance to having a King Day. I don't need to get into that. And the other states instead had celebrate Confederate Memorial Day, traitors, Jeff oh, Jefferson Davis Day. Yeah. Come on. The Klan, Proud Boy holidays. I mean, need these and this. Another one. I lived in near this town, as a matter of fact. Ponzi, they call it. Celebrate Groundhog Day. It's actually a pagan festival. And that's why they have 13 guys dressed in black. It's similar to like Whitcraft uh, issuing a proclamation. Uh, it sounds in there like an innocent holiday. But that's not the origin of it. A President's Day has no meaning whatsoever. To anybody except guys who are trying to sell cars or some guys trying to sell appliances. Um, I get I it's been so while since I've seen any sort of recreate any sort of acknowledgement okay. on President's Day. Thank you. Uh, here's some other things advertisements sure, I don't. that you see. Uh, Please silence yourself. Thank you. Uh, here's some ads. I guess this is showing respect for the, look at this, a poker tournament. We need to have a day to celebrate, to play poker. Um, mattress land. Uh, that's what I mean, that they, um, oh, and next, another one. There, I'm following sequentially, if you notice. We're entering into February here, and we get Valentine's Day. Which is nice to express sentiments towards, you know, your your loved one, but 
it has become simply a day for retailing candy, flower cards, jewelry, and to foster dining in restaurants. So I guess those are expressions of sentiment. They can be rather costly. Um, amazingly enough, this has gotten a little bit out of hand when restaurant sales surpass grocery sales. Um, but at the time when uh, seniors are looking to get subsidence, people in this country um, are looking to get subsidence. I also regard it a little bit as the merchandising of love. I, it's a wonderful <laughs> thing. You fall in love. Me, someone fall in love, but I, I don't think we need any particularly merchandising of okay. uh, air bonding. Um, let's see. Uh, no, I, regarding Valentine's Day, I, once again, we can look towards how are women regarded in socialist nations. Um, they're looking at making meaningful, constructive contributions in, in responsible profession. Tim, can we silence that guy? Um, the, uh, but we see women are given slightly different recognition for their contribution to society. I was looking again. I said, well, how is it among young women in this name? This is what we're concerned about now. If you're telling me we shouldn't need some refocusing, look at the cover title stories of this. I'm pregnant. Massive shopping guide for young ladies. Or look pretty at every party. Come on. Oh. Yeah, this is, here's another thing. This is what young women perhaps uh, should be taught that we can do it. Yes. And women say we came pretty close, but you didn't quite make it. Uh, in Lithuania, now we're entering March. You see how Lithuanians celebrate the holiday? They have a woman as president, as a matter of fact. Um, and they've been celebrating, that's their independence day. Actually, I don't know how the Lithuanians, that's the colors of the flag. I don't know how they were able to do this, but it's pretty neat. Uh, those are the colors of the Lithuanian flag that you saw earlier. There you go. And they did it there. And this is how the young people in Lithuania, the, they gathered together to sing a song it's about the colors of Lithuania. The song was the most important colors. See, these are, this is something that we need, they don't, shouldn't, they're not ashamed of. They come to the United States in March and what's going on here? Look at, the, look at this goofball. Oh, <laughs> and this girl. Uh, oh, look at that. Okay. Um, there's also somebody suggested in March, you can make up your own holiday. Somebody made up a best friend. So it's kind of nice, but you can make up your own holiday. In March also, I'd like to, this shouldn't be a good idea. Cesar Chavez Day and made a contribution to the organized labor movement. April Fool's Day, of course, is kind of a fun day. I don't know if it's necessarily all that essential. Here's some of the April Fools that have been fooled. Taco Bell bought the Liberty Bell. Uh, somebody who said you could grow spaghetti on trees. Uh, there was a technology that they could send odor over the internet. Um, somebody said you could change, they were changing the gravitational pull at a specific time. And um, Google Documents was claiming that you could un upload anything. Uh, these are rather bizarre things. Easter is not a religious holiday. It's a pagan, not a religion, but it's Earth-based religion. Um, not really Christianity. It's pagan in origin. Esther, the Teutonic goddess of spring and he says never referred to in scriptures uh earth day uh non-official nationwide holiday certainly one 
we should look towards adopting. Now, of course, at the college, we recognize it by generally featuring a series of eco speakers. Uh, this is another ad I put out this time of year for the Chicago Greens. And we and it's the ideas on how to have an eco Christmas. Are you going to have a polluting Christmas? <laughs> Are you going to have an eco Christmas? And Americans use more electricity with their little decorative lighting than they do in, use on electricity in some entire poor country, the entire country. Other days, we seemingly have a bicameral of May Day and Labor Day. We ought to get some consolidation here on that. Uh, uh, Cinco de Mayo Day, uh, the Hispanic community, from what I understand, this is not celebrated in Mexico, except in one province or location. Nevertheless, it is celebrated here. Uh, National Train Day is kind of disappeared. I mainly include this because I found this the most strangest advertisement I'd come across in a long time. I don't know what they were trying to convey with this advertisement. Uh, there's some other holidays. Whoops. There we go. Um, now of course, Mother's Day and Father's Day are kind of sacred on the calendar. Uh, parents Day, I don't think it's anyone does that maybe grandparents say but these are largely retail inspired um we've got to remove those elements if anything by the uh i mean there should be recognition for the contribution of the role roles individuals play in the nuclear and extended families certainly all that parents do for their children uh, and particularly recognizing parents in in their elder years uh, there's some, I, I don't know, flag days ever caught on. Independence Day, this relates a little story. As a matter of fact, a woman was fined $75 by a condo for flying on a, an American flag. I said it was an exterior decoration. Um, there you go. There's, there's some GMO produced foods. Um, Columbus Day, of course, has generated all kinds of controversy. I don't know if we need to celebrate um, the conquistadors <laughs> for what they did, or the padres who came along and with them. But uh, certainly there was an achievement was the discovery. But what subsequent anyone, of course, um, who's read the people's history of the United States is familiar with uh, why the Native American populations might not want to be too enthusiastic about celebrating October the 12th. They replaced it with an entire month. Uh, we just celebrated Native American Heritage Month uh, to replace it. Another one that's got to be looked at carefully. I think it's fun. It's nice that kids like to have fun, but there is a negative aspect to this occasion. Uh, a rather, uh, I mean, I like scary movies, but I, I don't know if they maybe cross the line a little bit. I mean, who wants to see a movie called Do You Like My Basement? <laughs> or a movie called Hatchet? I mean, this is, this is the things that are coming here. This is a cultural element. And I, and I, moving on in November, um, we have another binary conflict. We have Veterans Day and Memorial Day. Veterans Day is, um, uh, of course, I'm not certain about uh, World War One veterans are, are all left us. They certainly contributed in some fashion for their uh, dedication to the nation. Uh, but, um, we do have two days for those who serve their country in this regard. Thanksgiving, of course, all kinds of things about that. Oh, everybody and their brother knows what was done and authenticity of it. Here's the poem that I send out, and I don't get into the issue of what they had for dinner or not. 
Uh, I just came across the thing today that the there was no way the Indians would have been invited to Thanksgiving. I found that amazing. Um, we've got the 68 million turkeys are consumed on Thanksgiving. With little regard, to, we should show mercy and compassion for other species, uh, unlike this guy. Um, I am a railroad guy. We're developing our railroad. Um, they do have a parade in New York, and I have recommended that we develop a rail, high-speed rail line so that you could go to New York from Chicago, see the parade, and come back home all within the same day. It is possible. Uh, another problem with these, by like Thanksgiving is uh, you have conflicts. People want to be, that's what I mean with these family type situations. Um, retail commercial establishments are closed or open. Um, perhaps this is going away. I believe most of them now are closing, uh, but I have not done any real analysis of that. But you can see this young lady is selling shirts when she perhaps would like to be with her family. Of course, who wants or needs this day? It's apparently some sort of official day off in 24 states. I have not researched that, but come across that. Other people have looked upon it as buy nothing day. There's another little thing I posted on social media. If you're gonna go out the holiday season shopping, please, please, please mask up so that we can end during this period of pandemic. We have acknowledged to stay at the College of Complexes. The UH Declaration of Human Rights was adopted on December the 10th. And maybe again next year, we'll have a human rights speaker. And finally, we're heading into Christmas. Um, this is just overboard, over the top, intense materialism, rabid consumerism. Um, I've given a lecture on this. Hey, Tim, are you paying attention? You know how you Christmas gifts were made? There you go. There you see a young lady. She's, that, she's a child herself making toys for children. Oh, the favorite gift is clothes. We throw away more than 68 pounds of clothing for a year. So we need a holiday where people purchase more of it and get more clothes to each other. Yeah. I, I'm not certain if that's useful. I guess Red Cup Day, um, they unleash the design of Starbucks. I guess it's what they're coming on one year celebration of the first union at a Starbucks is going to be celebrated. So that's something for Starbucks to celebrate as well. That's going to be coming up, I think, December 10th or something. Oh, there's a book I have marketed before. Uh, the, the Santa Claus teaching children to believe in Santa Claus is not harmless fun. Um, it's blind obedience to authority. Um, Yes, and your inculcate values, I'm not certain. Um, I also, around this time of year, on the 21st, give or take, um, the winter solstice is celebrated uh, by the Druids uh, at Stonehenge. If you hear that poem, I think uh, Robert Frost's poem, which actually was written and takes place, um, he talks about the darkest evening of the year in the middle of it. So the poem written on the winter solstice. And I think we should replace Santa with the spirit of the woods. Now uh, that's, I think, much better. And you get to relate to nature. Like these young ladies, they're, they're doing, that's pretty good. Because what I think is sort of, <laughs> this is a fun illustration of what these cat and dog think of Santa Claus. Okay, another artificiality of holidays. <laughs> People aren't even putting up their own decorations. You can contract with these guys for 950 bucks. They'll decorate your house or door and to the whatever extent you like. So you don't even have to just call them up. They'll decorate your house. Now, one thing we have to do, we have to get to the end of that part, 
we have to fix an international fixed calendar. Um, we have the same uh, days in each month uh, throughout the year. You don't have to read all this. We may have to add one day at the end of the year or one day for leap year. There you see what the standard month would look like. The only disadvantage of this I've heard is that perhaps your birthday would always be on the same day like a Tuesday, um, which I don't think is the worst thing in town. But this, the commercial Department of Commerce should do this immediately. It, it's, it would make accounting and scheduling of employees, such as I used to have to do, uh, infinitely easier. Uh, they really have to begin anew each month. The financial computing, uh, it's got to, this is not just a good idea. Now, here are my suggestions, and you can come up with your own, but I'll go through these kind of quickly and we'll be done. This is my high suggestions for holidays. Are you ready? Let's go. I think we should have a commencement day to plan personal and public improvements right at the start of the year. I think we should have a day for public hearings of government agencies and town hall meetings on civic participation. I think we should have a civilization day to celebrate human cultural accomplishments through the centuries. In other countries, they have what are called museums of civilization. I think we should look at this aspect of human activity and highlight different elements of it every year. Now we all are a nation of immigrants. I believe there should be some merit to cultural traditions, keeping them alive, at least what they used to be. Um, to counter the mono monoculture that is slowly taking over um, our nation. It's cultural appropriation. Uh, what? Anyhow, I think we should have an Academy Day. Um, this would be a good day to plan your schooling, education, have counseling, things like that. That's This is a really important day to have. And Public Service Day to appreciate, to show the appreciation for public employees such as myself and understand the hard work that we do for you. We work for America every day. That's what we work for America every day. Uh, we, now there is a UN day, which isn't terribly off, sadly not recognized too much in October. So I'm saying we should have a global governance day for all a peace day an all-nation peace and cooperation day in which we look at treaties and cooperation, maybe terminate warfare and, and bring an end to them. I, in line with this, we need a weapons reduction and contestation day. This one has to be capitalist in the United States. A biosphere day, evolution and biosphere sustainability day. Um, each of us lives in a bioregion. There should be celebrations pertinent to each bioregion in which you live, indicating how good or bad it is. I think also we should come up with an eco village day. Do you live in an eco village or a consumption village? Do you live in a low consumption community? An eco village. How does, how would, what has to be done to change your community and make it an eco village. Another thing we got is a nationwide plastic reduction day. The microplastics are entering the environment. The hazards of this has yet to be calculated. So let's put an end to it right now. I, I believe we're going gonna, gonna to end up with some sort of friendship dinner day uh, where people get together. It seems to be a feature that people enjoy. I can see, understand it. Um, so we're going to have to accommodate people in that regard. But we've got to avoid, as I said, some of the peak and off-peak 
congestion problems so that we do not have, maybe have it in different parts of the country at different times. So I don't know. I leave it up to you. You guys are smart, figure it out. And then another thing we should have is an artistic day for plays and performances of, of merit. We should schedule art fairs and have special activities at museums. Uh, didactic plays could be performed like the ancient Greeks did. Uh, we could have appropriate thematic folk musical performances. Everybody get together and sing songs like Solidarity Forever. It's a good song and everybody learn the words. Uh, have a present. Uh, here's a guy I enjoy. We could, we could, we could um, focus on particular artists of quality and merit. Not some of these teenage girls, perhaps, but that's like Slim. Oh, that's music. There you go. That's quality. That's quality entertainment. Uh, we maybe we should have a little library and literature day. Go to your public library. If you haven't been there in a while, they have book fairs like like this. There we are at Trainers Row. Is there a nice table? Oh, we, we should also have a science and discovery day to look at the laws of the universe and need to know how they've been updated, changed. What is the latest belief? Cos cosmology, uh, purpose to, to advance scientific literacy so that we don't have individual organizations um, who are giving distorted scientific findings or backward concepts. Uh, we might also separate secular uh, in line with this. The United States is the only major country to, to, uh, that were first introduced separation of church and state. We might want to look at cosmology and different kind. What what um, universe do you occupy? We also, of course, being a historian, we need to look at historic events of note that took place. There are many that simply don't get any attention. We could do something to bring rotis on a rotating basis or some that have been overlooked. Uh, the anniversaries like the Transcontinental Railroad. There you see the gold. I actually found there are four golden spikes and one of them has been missing. And I think I found it. I was at a railroad swap meet and a guy had a box of stuff for 25 cents and there was a spike in there and it was all dirty, but I, I cleaned it off. It was gold and I didn't say anything. I gave him 25 cents. Anyhow, we've also recognized individuals' contributions to our culture and society there. You can see there's one for Conrad Lennon, uh, Jane Adams. Uh, this is this is the thing about stamps. <laughs> they featured 800 individuals and they have a committee. Uh, we might have a cleanup day civic. Uh, we've done this in my neighborhood. Uh, interpersonal, this is another friendship type day. Get to know who your neighbors are. You know, get out and know you in your block. Here's a good one, social discussion day, social progress day. What in there have you discussed uh, current events and social? When was the last time? Get people to do this annually to keep up with things. So we might have a National College Complex Day. And as I say, we needed one Labor Day. So how about organized Labor Day? How about a solidary economy day to recognize the contribution of the 99%? Uh, and how what they have to do. Instead, we make them work on holidays. This was a day when they should not be, under any circumstances, made to work. Here's a, another day. If we're going to recognize individuals, maybe Robin Hood Day to end social stratification. Uh, to look at what's going on regarding the economic features of our nation. Uh, we might also have 
a conspiracy truth day to get these all done with once and forever. Like, why do all these guys post the same way? There's a whole bunch of conspiracies to get you started. We'll get these settled, resolved once and for all. You know, uh, are there four blood moons? Things like that. Um, we also need perhaps a day for national health to bring attention to eating quality food. So also celebrate agriculture, the contribution of the farmers to this nation. How about Public Health Practices Day? Dude, Matt, this is one that we really, really is a good idea. Um, uh, how about a Great Thoughts Day? Where you for the, take a little time and think the thoughts, issues of the day. Authentic Activities Day. I like this one. Do something that is authentic. When was the last time you did something that was authentic? And that brings us to end. There's the list coming soon. My next one I'm working on, a look at the timeless and enduring appeal of Robin Hood. But anyhow, happy holidays. Okay. Tim, where are we at? We got Justin Tucker got a question already. Yeah, I know. We're going to get this real quick. I'm going to have uh, David Zucker moderate tonight. Why don't you unshare? Sir? I'm going to unshare your screen so we can get the uh, get this thing going again. Um, hang on here. Why don't you unshare your screen, Charlie? <laughs> oh, hi. Never mind. Okay, we got it now, Charlie. All right, uh, I'll call them out. Uh, go ahead, David, and uh, Justin Tucker's next on the uh, on the uh, first question. All right, Justin, you have a, you have a, a question? Okay, All see. right, so Charlie. See the mic. How do you, uh, is there any, uh, is there a clause in the constitution um, that uh, gives the authority for the government to make holidays or even even create a committee or a department to discuss or create new holidays? Uh, there is in fact in the Department of Commerce, a, an agency um, for the Department of Regulation of Human Resources. So yeah, and it, and it slide with the portion of that is the Department of Labor. So there are provision provision already. Uh, it's an economic activity um, in large part. Yeah, you have they would ascertain the economic effects uh, of a holiday on the economy. That's um, uh, lost hours, negative effects, things of that nature. But I'm not certain. And, but apparently it's been now there. I showed you the legislation there that the president himself has authority to declare a holiday seemingly already. He's been vested with that authority. So he could declare a holiday tomorrow. And I believe that, uh, I don't know if that's ever been affected, uh, but, and yeah, there has been tests and as I showed, there was a court case, somebody was trying to get rid of religious holidays, you know, and they said, no, they've overcome it. Most of these holidays have been transformed uh, from the religious nature, such as Easter, um, which is, has got secular elements, of course, Easter bunnies and Christmas has uh, Santa Claus, Santa Claus and, and Rudolph and stuff like that. So they're saying, well, it's a blend of holidays. Uh, I, I believe there's, what you're asking is, is there enabling legislation for holidays? I believe that's already in effect. Okay, Dave, who's next? 
Who's next? A question for Charlie. I, I got a question for Charlie. All right, Tim. What's wrong with the traditional holidays that we've had? I mean, all I've seen is celebrations of socialism and how they do it in North Korea. Personally, I would much rather have our system of holidays. Can you comment on why you think the traditional holidays are just crazy? Well, I was talking for about an hour. <laughs> Did you? Did you go for a walk someplace? Uh, I didn't go for you, a walk. Do you I think, buy you it. think people getting in? Do you think people should? We should have a day that people should get totally intoxicated for no per purpose. I and you can say, "Oh, this is a good activity. Let's all get intoxicated for no per purpose, endanger yeah. the lives of others." Uh, and themselves, uh, and you see no problem with that. You see nothing wrong with that. Um, you see nothing wrong with uh, young people going out and, and, and engaged in destruction of their communities on All Hallows' Eve. You don't think it's better? Look what the Chinese were doing. They were, instead of, I go you there, instead of robbing people on public transit, they wanted everyone to respect each other and to, teaching people how to behave courteously of one another. You know, offer a seat to old people and things like that. And that's much better. Ah, yeah, right. All right, who's next? Justin. Okay, Justin. 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 Charlie. I think uh is is drinking alcohol to get drunk not a legitimate excuse to drink alcohol? Because if not, then what's the point? You can drink it all, but does this have to be something our nation celebrates? Drinking alcohol? This I this is this is a the only thing we could think to acknowledge or St. Patrick's Day and uh I'm not averse to guy drinking, but I am wondering if we should have the entire nation intoxicated for no apparent reason. I people drink to celebrate. Well, what are they celebrating on New Year's Eve? I shouldn't answer question with a question, but I don't know what they're celebrating. Another year? <laughs> that I one year is like the next. I mean, it's not really it's the calendar date. You know, I I don't know. Uh, yeah, okay. you want to drink, but we have to have the entire entire nation full of drunk drivers. Anybody can drive. Who else we got? Janice, you got Janice, what do you got? Unmute. You got to unmute, Janice. Did you ask something? Yeah, you you're asking a question. Yeah, I got a question. Why? How in the world did we get Sundays off? Is that just biblical? Oh, you know, it's been a while. I gave a lecture, as a matter of fact, many, many years ago on the calendar. And as far as I recollect, um, actually, our calendar is Egyptian in origin. But yeah, the uh, I believe a day off for um, now. There are countries who tried changing it. Russia tried to go to a ten ten day week, and they actually tried to eliminate Sunday so that none of the factories would close. Um, Was they that would Johnny Tremaine? 
No, in Russia. Where he worked on a Sunday, a he got, uh, you know, got in trouble. <laughs> I guess, um, yeah, you could get in trouble. It, but in Russia, they had a 10-day week. And they also tried to get rid of Sunday altogether so that the factories never closed. Now, the only problem was... Yeah, they made, was they made the churches into museums. Yeah. But, yeah. but people with a... The Russians ran into is that the husband and wife never had a day off together. So there are occasions where people need a day of rest. Um, and I honestly don't recollect the particulars, but uh, it was a, a religious in nature. I remember when stores all used to be closed on um Sundays, Sunday? especially in oh, South yes. Holland. Nothing was open. Yeah. The first ones to break the ice were the automobile dealerships. But then that was before and, capitalism got us all. Yeah, but they wanted to sell automobiles. And so automobile dealerships started to remain open on Sundays, claiming that a family would go out and pick out a new Chevrolet and it was a harmless activity. Uh, but yes, everything was closed. Most Except for your pocketbook. <laughs> yeah. Okay, All right, uh, we got Alexa. Thank you. Alexis next. All right, Alexis, you're next. Hi. Um, so I guess I'm a little confused because I believe the topic of this debate was about like the government creating a branch or like department of holidays and yeah. you know, your entire speech was kind of just you saying why you don't like the current American holidays and suggesting alternative ones and not really saying anything about why you think the government should. I, I guess the only thing I can see is are you suggesting that the government create a you know department in which you choose the holidays like as the leader of it because uh, there's no you didn't talk about the government and their role in this kind of at all yeah you're right i i'm a retired federal employee and i i know all about creating agencies um once you have the enabling legislation and you would set up an agent as i indicated um that it's a natural place would be there are two locations i looked up as a matter of fact good question uh the office of personnel management opm and the department of commerce um office of resource management human resource management i discovered had jurisdiction over national holidays now you could set up a full commission uh, to establish the schedule for each calendar year. Uh, there may be subcommittees, depending on the holiday. There may even be geographic, uh, regional, uh, 10 regions. Uh, the, the government administers the nation in, in 10 regions. But yeah, I didn't get into the particulars. Um, Yes, a, a bureaucratic oversight committee of representatives from science and the arts, I would think, scholars, uh, and guys like me to, to run it. Does that answer your question? I, I mean, you, like I said, I, I understand that that's what you want, but I guess the argument for why the government should should do this and why they have the authority to just besides the fact that you think that the current holidays are problematic and would like to see them replaced you you kind of just gave your yeah, I think the government, yeah the government certainly has the authority to do it they, has, they can they have to regulate the hours and days of work and on that basis alone they should they should act more 
than they are doing to guarantee us such as a vacation policy, as is the case in other countries. And a vacation policy would include a holidays uh, as a benefit. Unfortunately, in this nation, under capitalist profit motivations, it is that the deciding official right now are the 1% CEOs of multinational corporations and profit motive guys, or the owner of the company. So the 99%, they're lucky, as I said, and then once I didn't like it, you have to get them to agree to it. Well, come on now, no. I think we should have more authority in that that it is a feature, an important feature of our lives, and it can, in fact, enhance our culture. And we can get rid of aspects which are not cultural enhancing, which like getting drunk all the time. Um, yes, and you can have some, right now, it's just a haphazard mess. And I like things orderly. And yeah, you could have seasoned federal employees like me. I gladly would be in charge of the operation. I'd have no, no difficulty. Just be another day at work. Thank you. Good question. Okay, Dean, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to make a suggestion that we have to we have to add any holidays. Best choice would be, I think, the first Monday of August. Uh, you got the of course you got the fourth of July before any day, and then you got Labor Day on Monday. You have all that vacancy there. I think it'd be appreciated more by people if you had a middle of summer, like a two-day weekend. If that they add any of them more on, choose the summer months where people can use it more often. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's a good point. There actually was a period in the spring where there were no holidays. Um, that's why they were trying to promote uh, public employee day because they said there's there was like a gap in March. Now, the other thing about the religious holidays is that, and you could argue this, they largely all take place in the first half of the year. They're kind of crowded together. So you also get an uneven distribution. I've heard read things regarding that, that they're a little bit crowded together. You get actually Easter can be as early as in February. So it depending on when it is. So you can have a real cluster of religious type holidays in one one portion of the year. Right. Bob, next question. All right, it's back. Bob. Bob. Unmute, Bob. Unmute. Hey, Bob, we need you to unmute. I hope the talk wasn't okay. too long, folks. Uh, Bob, can you hear me now, Charlie? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Look at hey. Mark, what's up? Fine talk, and I like your pictures, your images very much. <clears throat> you were long on criticizing, and someone just stated. <clears throat> I'm rather short on what you wanted. But one holiday that I would propose is um, a day for making meaning, since making meaning is our greatest value and one we've um, not developed at all, but would do the most good, definitely, uh, instead of just getting drunk or going to church or that stuff. Similar things that we do. Um, you know, could make a real difference in our lives, and we need to, to devote at least one day of a year to that, if not all of them. What do you think, Charlie? Yeah, it sounds good. You, you got my my uh, concurrence all together on that. Um, most people have lives of meaningless activities, and many of the holidays I try to convey that we we're presently engaged in meaningless meaningless activities, or they've <laughs> lost their original meaning over time. Oh. And so there, th that was in one of the slides. 
They've lost the original meaning of the holiday. It's just like Valentine's Day. It's gotten kind of artificial. You know, it, it's more of a, a buy-sell type of day than... Not about love you know, anymore. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. But certainly a day to recognize, have you engaged in any activities that enhanced the life, the meaning of your life or the lives of others? Certainly that would be a top of the list. And I'd make everyone buy a copy of your book. Oh, and to read one, you can't stop. But we do definitely no, do good most idea. good. That's why we're here is to make meaning. So why not celebrate it one day at least? And we're doing yeah. most good. Dan and Lana are next. A lot of these holidays have no meaning at all. Dan and Lana are next. President's Day? Come on. What what meaning is what meaning is that for President's Day? You know, I okay, some, Charlie. We're gonna have nothing. Ben and Lana go next. Dan and Lana, please unmute and uh, ask your question. Okay. Uh, good talk, Charlie. Uh, what about? Thank you. You're welcome. Um, uh, Starbucks. The Starbucks. Uh, Celebration of the first year of the union is October 9th, Friday, Friday, October 9th at noon at Federal Plaza. But uh, you didn't have a union there, or was that Labor Day? You got the month wrong. You got the month wrong, December 9th. December 9th, right, December 9th. There this you month. go. This month. At Federal, Federal Plaza Day. at noon. Right. Good. So unions, I guess May Day is a union day. Is that right? Well, there's always been an argument. The commies like you and I want May Day celebrated around the rest of the world. In Chicago, May Day was, of course, in 1886, the celebrated and resulted in the Haymarket affair, uh, precipitated that. Um, and then the long-term effort was to dissuade people in, in the United States from embracing any aspect of socialism. So they came up with this uh, August holiday. So we all just heard a speaker recommending they said, well, there was a vacant day, nice, pleasant weather, make it Labor Day. Actually, I I don't think it has ever caught on. Labor Day, you're entirely correct. Um, for some reason, uh, May Day just seems to fit, fit better. And we ought to do what the rest of the world is doing. I, I see no reason why we have to engage in singularity. Uh, we got why it's worldwide celebration uh, uh, of, of of performance uh, to make our societies better and so to keep our societies operating. The contribution of the working men and women. But all right, December the ninth celebration of Starbucks going union. Yeah, all right. Glad to hear it. Okay, go ahead. Right. Justin, you're next. Unmute, Justin. Charlie, so uh, forgive me if you mentioned this in the top in the in the talk, but is there a if is there uh is there a holiday that if you could wave a wand that you would force everybody to observe? Which day would it be, and what would be the punishment? For those who refuse to celebrate it, uh, voting, voting. And then what's the punishment? I don't know, about a year in jail. I don't you know. I, for, uh, right. for failing to exercise franchise. Now, the other side of the coin is there are many, the current strategy 
is to dissuade people from voting. So I say to just the opposite, make it mandatory. Republicans are not gonna like that. And they're trying to dissuade and keep people from voting. I say, well, my proposal is to obligate everyone to do it. Now we have to be reasonable about the punishment. Perhaps a small fine uh, would be acceptable. Um, I think that would deter many people. But given the multiple, we have to enhance, there's two sides to it in planning the holidays. So you need a commission with a guy like me in charge. First of all, you have to ensure that everybody has multiple opportunities for voting, meaning by mail, by early voting all over the place, or in person. And then if you fail to take advantage of any of those opportunities, I don't think you've got a valid excuse. Of course, you have to have some appeal process. You could give me a call and I'll listen to you. And I think if you've got a legitimate excuse for not having voted, I might say, okay. okay. You know, is, but, uh, uh, not wanting that's to what I mean, two sides of it. I'm sorry. Is not wanting to vote for any of the candidates because you personally dislike them a valid reason to uh, be, uh, to be uh, you know, not have to pay the fine or face the punishment? Uh, listen, this nation is going to have officials, designated deciding officials, whether you like it or not. If you want to be illogical and think, uh, as I think one political party does, that society can be operated without anyone in charge, I, that's why I, I don't know if that's legitimate political science. But we are a complex society is getting more complex. And I think everyone should pay attention to who, I think it would make people pay attention to how they vote, just the opposite effect. If you knew you had to vote and you say, well, maybe I ought to look into what I'm doing here. But now it's just kind of, well, I should I go to, shouldn't I? I don't know, you know, kind of thing. But yes, you make it an obligation of citizenship. Responsible citizenship. Okay. Come on. If you but if you don't want to vote for any of the people, why should he be punished for that? What? Cut them if you don't want to I vote for any of the people that are on the ballot. Write it down. Someone is going to be a deciding official. Whether you like it or not, this is a choice we face. You know that. You may not like the candidates. So you are left the choice of one or the other. And you pick the one of those. We don't we don't always like the candidate. People don't, you know that in every presidential, they had their personal choices and they didn't make it on the ballot. That doesn't mean you don't vote. I mean, I wanted to consider to be president. He didn't make it on the ballot, but it didn't mean I didn't vote. Doesn't mean to go without a president. That's what I mean. It's not legitimate to say that we're, we're going to have no voting at all. Hey, why don't you have everybody? We have another question. We have another question here. Alexa, unmute. You're next. Yeah. Um. So I have a bit of a follow up, kind of to my last question. Um. How would how would changing the holidays and slash how the how would the government controlling what is and isn't a holiday uh, prevent people from getting drunk and you know quote unquote doing the uh, right activities? Because uh, we we tried prohibition and uh, it's one of the few times government admitted that they made a mistake. You know, banning alcohol. <laughs> so like, how do you intend to have people not drink? By and giving make them alternatives. By giving people alternatives, and How they will know? self culture. People will self culture, and they will. If people are engaged in wholesome, constructive activities, it would be a natural. Natural forces will be a deterrent to time wasters. 
if you give call, they'll say, well, we've got all some things to do and we don't want any drunks around here. We're trying to celebrate our civilization, for example. We don't, uh, you could go, it, it'd be natural. Uh, there are things called mores and norms. It would become the norm of the society to participate. Now you gotta make it meaningful participation in activities. But if you people give for people viable alternative, they're willing to pursue it. So you're, and instead you're of getting saying, intoxicated. So, so you know, you're saying yeah, I, people don't have any choice to drink right now. These people who are, you know, the people you put on your, the images of those people in your uh, presentation, which I would kind of argue, you know, was kind of selectively very biased. They were having alcohol forced well, down course. their throats. Yeah, I because they didn't choose. Biased. They have freedom of uh, choice. They chose to we're drink. Not gonna have any like we're not going to have any holiday police, if that's what you mean, enforcing. That's not the intent. People would want to celebrate, like have meaning in you. Know, you know, voluntarily. Who wouldn't want to? If there's nice activities a parade and things like that. I'm not policing anybody. I didn't, nowhere in the presentation do, do you find the word enforcement. Now, I brought it up in this one here. He gave me the question, uh, would you enforce it? And I said, yes, conceivably for voting, because I think that's a responsible activity that's required. Uh, but that's not the same case as whether or not, if you choose not to celebrate the holiday, you simply can do so. At participation, there's no monitoring, no reporting. So if you wanna do what you want, on the day off, you perfectly could just to remain in total isolation. I don't know why you would, but if you chose to, that would not be uh, a, anything to enforce penalty. But yes, I certainly I made an idea, like the whole purpose is to use my human intellect to come up with activities that would foster, uh, we used to have a thing called the great society. You don't want a great society, I guess. I'm, okay, I don't know where you got that from, but I mean, we do have parades. There are people have choices of how to spend their holidays now. There's plenty of thing, cultural enrichment and stuff that people can do. I'm just uh, if you know, Saint like, like I said, if if your new holidays just end up with everybody getting drunk or whatever, like what what's the point? What have what's you saw as Saint the government? Day? What goes on St. Patrick Day that that for what what There's, what's the positive there element of that? Wow. A lot of Irish families, you know, a lot of people get Irish food, you know, and support like Irish small businesses, and stuff like that. I yes, was some downtown do when there, people don't. I was downtown when there was a riot on St. Patrick. Uh, believe you me, there was in fact a riot. All the young people were in time drunk. The police got on. That was the day. That's why they never had that parade again on State Street. And oh, it got out of hand. They were grabbing. The kids were walking around with six packs of beer. The police had garbage cans. And they were, would take the beer and fill up the garbage cans. They, they got out of hand. OK, Charlie. Well, people, people riot on non-holidays, too. Um, might no, I mention that, that January 6th, um, all of the BLM stuff, I, I could go on, but I did, yeah, holidays don't magically. I not so I, you gotta, you know, it's hard for us to say you to want that. I was, I saw one of the police chief. Questioners, please. Yeah. All right. All right, Andy, go ahead. He's live at Dappers. Go ahead, Andy. Hey, Charlie, I, I got a question for you. If you can just yeah, answer yes or no. Uh, do you know who Greg Nallist is? I couldn't hear you. Can you? Greg? Greg Pallast, B-A-L-A-S-T. No, I, I'm, no, 
Well, when you talk about voting, uh, that man has spent the last 20 years, he's the premier vote fraud investigator in the world. And he's been investigating the Republican claims of vote fraud while they're actually governors, secretaries of state. And Is this a question? Is this a question? A question. Well, well, the question, you said no. And no, then, well, wait a minute. Well, this I'm, is a I'm, remark. I got another. You know the rules. I got another question for you, Charlie. Are you are you aware? Because you didn't talk about it. Are you aware of the, the the Republican voter suppression campaign nationwide to make it virtually impossible for many Democrats and then people minority people minority? It's impossible to vote. They're closing down voting places. They they're uh, they're, they're What's getting your question? close to the polls. The question is. What do you think we should do about the voter suppression by the Republicans? Well, there was legislation, uh, I forget the name of it, the Pro Vote Act or something like that, that they weren't able to get through Congress, I believe, because it had to get through the Senate as well. But there was legislation enacted to counter those efforts. I'd have to refresh myself on the status, but refresh that legislation. Uh, that was advanced by the Democrats in the House. Uh, right. Yes, uh, I would. The one last comment and the suggestion I would make to everybody that's watching tonight: there's a free video you can watch up until Election Day this next Tuesday. Greg Pallas and some other people produced a documentary, a video called "Vigilantes." It's called "Vigilantes," and it's about the vigilantes in the South that are preventing hundreds of thousands of people from casting a ballot. I agree with you totally on that, Andy. Well, I, I on the same page. Well, I, I hope so. And uh, yeah, I, I want to make it mandatory even. Well, if you made it mandatory, that would go a long way toward uh, stopping the vigilante suppression of uh, the fact, thousands of people. They should give you $25 for voting. Well, that would help. Okay. And a six pack of beer. All right. Justin's next. Justin. Uh, hey, uh, so let's say that the, uh, the holiday board says that my punishment for not voting in the election is one year in jail. And then the authorities come to take me away, but I refuse to go with them. Is are the authorities then justified in using deadly force if necessary? Are you saying they would kill you? Kind of I'm asking. Yourself. I'm asking you. <laughs> because you didn't want to vote. Well, what happens? So, if they, I mean, if the if the election mentally committee... ill people should need mentally ill people need to be taken out of society, Justin. I, what can I say? You know. So you know, there's more people who don't vote. Twenty five dollars to vote. I just said I'm going to pay you twenty five dollars to go vote. Deduction on your income tax uh, if you vote. You can. Did you vote? You get twenty five dollars off, and you refuse that. Yes. So what happens? What Why? Happens? Let him go. Vote. Why? What's the purpose? Because I don't want to vote. I don't be forced to vote in election. It's a form of. You don't want to do something for no apparent reason. Then I don't know. I, You're not even. I, you didn't even answer the question I asked, Charlie. So what? Happens? I only believe in the human activities that have some logical purpose behind them. Okay, so so what's that? Illogical so, one. Support, you support the government coming after people who don't vote. So I'm asking you, what happens to the people who refuse to, you know, pay the fine or refuse there are all to the levels jail? of compliance, first, right, Justin? First I'm offense, sorry? first offense will be a warning. Sure. Second level will be, I don't know, a little worse. Just like a penalty guide, we'll have a penalty guide. Third offense, then you're in real trouble. Okay, it's so what's in, what's in real trouble from the nation? what expulsion so so you get you will get expulsed so you support expulsion from the nation for well, now it makes as much sense as your question 
Well, you, you're the one who supports the government coming after people. So obviously there's punishments for these particular crimes. Yeah, I just said, to, so you can, asking what the punishment will be is not illogical. You can, you can pay the fine. And what if I don't pay it? Well, then you, you'll get in the face. The penalty guide will that, then this, you're going to go to stage two. Okay, Failure what if I don't comply fines. with stage two? Failure to pay fines. What if I don't pay the fines? Is this 20 questions or what? Yeah, I'm trying to go. Where, where am I? How, there you know, is going to be compliance requirements. There are, okay, but what are, if they don't comply? Listen, Justin, in order to be an actor, yeah, if you have to be in our society, so there's a multitude of things you have to comply with. And yes, uh, you know, I'm sorry about that. All right, rebuttals next. We're all done with questions. That's the best you guys got. All right, we're going to go about, uh, seeing as how we got some time, we'll do about four minutes each for rebuttals. Who's got a rebuttal tonight? All right, Andy, you're up first. Okay, let him go. I'll go first. I'll go first. And I'm going to get right up front here in front of the microphone. And I'll take that if you don't mind. Charlie, to be honest with you, I have never heard such horse fodder in all my life considering these holidays. You know, Congress spends tons and tons of time making all these national days of whatever and who much and how what we do and how we do it. And frankly, it's a waste of the Congress's time. If you want a holiday, you simply say, okay, I have a holiday. I'm gonna celebrate this day. And frankly, I think our traditional holidays lend some good structure to the year. I happen to like Christmas not only because of the gift giving, but of the spirit of Christ and his resurrection from the dead. I think it's good we celebrate Jesus's birthday. I also think it's good that we celebrate on Easter, his rising from the dead. Perhaps maybe you could use a little bit by believing in him yourself. The thing is, when you go to these communist countries, these socialist countries, and they're participating in all these public festivals, the thing is most of those people who do that stuff are kind of forced into it. And, uh, it's, it almost reminds me of these Nazi rallies that Hitler used to have. Yeah, they celebrated because if they did, they were shot, you know. And like I said, your glorious socialist, uh, propaganda, your glorious socialist countries, you know, if I was to declare a national holiday, I would make that holiday National Corporation and Globalization Day. Why? Because it's been through globalization and the nationalization and the, and the uh, invention of the corporation that has got more people out of poverty, has gotten more people out of extreme need. And what does it take? It's an economy, stupid. It's a good economy that produces good jobs. And for you government workers, it's guys like me who pay taxes that support your jobs. Now, I do know there's a role for government in the regulation of commerce and some things like that in the provisions of public goods, and there should be some kind of safety net, we all know that. But the thing is, what you forget to realize is that if you're really gonna celebrate the holidays, why not celebrate one for business and corporations and the mere fact for entrepreneurs? Now, yeah, I'm sweat shop day, let's have a sweat shop day. Well, I'll tell you something, Charlie, I'll tell you something, National Sweat Shop Day is certainly much better than the peasant farming that you're advocating because a sweatshop is a simply a means to an end. They stop after a few years because the jobs are a hell of a lot better than what they're doing on their subsistence farms. And the fact yeah, the that children they're... grow up, the children grow up. Well, of course children grow up. At least they don't come like you and advocate stupid theories like socialism, which has been uh, disproven wrong over the years. Remember, the Berlin Wall fell because of communism. And, and look at what's going on now in China and Iran and even North Korea. Every, and, and all those countries are now starting to protest against their stupid socialist and communistic overlords. At least here in our country, you can get out, you can, you can get yourself 
uh, protesting. And you can protest about anything. As a matter of fact, we got to have a protest against protesters. They do nothing but clog the highways. They do nothing but bring things in. And they do nothing but wreck, wreck the economy. Yeah, they do have good social skills. And yes, they do have a, have a movement in there. But the protest, simply the protest, is crazy. However, if we're going to really, really celebrate something, why not celebrate capitalism? It's the best thing that's eliminated most people out of poverty, got most of our people economically inclined. <clears throat> and yes, I may even advocate something that's called the social, called the National Solar Reactor Day. Yay. Yay. Where we'll have our comment, where we'll have our, uh, where we'll have our um, celebration of nuclear power and how it will help us break climate change. I'm done. Pass the potato chips, Tim. <laughs> yeah. Okay, who's next? I'll be there. Go ahead, David. <coughs> With regard to your comments made about <coughs> President's Day, well, there's some of us who actually go to the Chicago Historical Society on that day and look at the exhibits honoring President Lincoln and think about President Washington too. And we don't think about mattress sales or buying cars on that day. With regard to the comments that were made about New Year's, most of us like to have a day at the end of the year to start the new one off so we can rejoice and say goodbye to whatever it was we didn't like about the old year. And as so far as St. Patrick's Day is concerned, if you really think you can get between the Irish and having a good time, good luck. And you, I noticed you didn't mention Mardi Gras, which is also another period for rejoicing down in, down in the South. And with regard to Thanksgiving, or regard to Harvest Home Dinners, we call that Thanksgiving and we already have that. <laughs> and with regard to what you talked about, uh, regarding getting together to have for common awareness and so on, well, we used to have such an event when I was a boy in grade school. It's called National Brotherhood Week. And unfortunately, we seem to have gotten away from that. And I would like to see that brought back. And I noticed that you didn't mention abolishing Halloween in there while you were at it. Well, you can explain that to all the kids who look forward to trick-or-treating and getting candy on Halloween. Uh, I'm sorry, some of your suggestions for holidays weren't bad. To get rid of all our traditional holidays, no, I'm dead set against that. And with regard to Christmas, and some of you may be surprised that I, as a Jew, would say this, but I happen to like the Christmas season, and I observe, observe the secular aspects along with everybody else. Are we really suggesting that we should stop watching Miracle on 34th Street with the marvelous courtroom scene in there in which the lawyer who is representing Chris Kringle, who they want to declare, ins declare insane, commit, brings in the letters that the post office has to deliver to Santa Claus, a mere three letters where the post office gets hundreds of these every year, where there are other exhibits. Produce them, young man, produce them. And at that point, the lawyer waves to the doors, and at that point, all the, the, the letter carriers come with sacks and sacks of mail. The surrogate from the New York County Surrogates Court and then has to dig himself out from under the mail on the bench. And uh, the lawyer says if the, if, if the U.S. Post Office Department and they, if the Post Office Department and agency of the U.S. government says this man is Santa Claus, I suggest he is Santa Claus. <laughs> if, if the government said this man is Santa Claus, this court will not disagree. Case dismissed. All right. Ask who's next. Who's next? Justin, go ahead. Just touch All right, you. Justin. All right. Uh, I want to thank Charlie for a very interesting, I shall say, presentation. Um, I strongly disagree with his position that you need to force people to vote on a designated election day. Um, I feel that uh, that sort of stuff goes against, you know, the basic American freedoms 
that we have. Uh, I don't have to vote for anybody if I don't want to. And that's basically what most people in the United States do, unfortunately. Um, I think that uh, if we're gonna have new holidays, they should be, uh, they should commemorate entrepreneurs or they should commemorate um you know great people who who worked hard to uh make freedom a priority for all people i think a frederick Douglass day would be great i he think was an emperor. he was an entrepreneur You can have more than one holiday proposed, uh, one full at a time. What do you time. want, a Henry Ford day? Sure, why not? I mean, if the people want it, most holidays happen because people Charlie. celebrate them. You know, it's it's, you know, uh, think of, you know, think think of some of the festivals that have like come out in like the past twenty years that just didn't exist. I mean, you know, these sort of uh, uh, things can bubble up. So certainly. If enough Henry Ford people wanted to celebrate his birthday, um, I'm he sure they have a... something going. And I'm sure probably people in Michigan do celebrate that already, maybe to a certain degree. should have a railroad to Tycoon Day or something. Railroad. Uh, railroad. You know, Charlie, you're interrupting me, and it's one full at a time, sir. Sorry. Um, I just the definition of entrepreneur day. One full at a time, Charlie. Who, who, who are we celebrating? Is Charlie done? Okay, thanks. So um, also, I mean, Charlie, I like Charlie a lot. He does a good, does a lot of good for the college, but this this fascination with communism that he has is, is I mean, how old are you, Charlie? You're in your 70s? I mean, most people I know gave that shit up by age 25. So, I I um I'm I'm a little concerned about about your maturity level on this. Um, you know, maybe if there was an Entrepreneur Day and you know the culture around Entrepreneur Day, you know, maybe maybe it can convince you that you know celebrating. Mao's birthday or Stalin's birthday or whatever birthdays you want to force us to celebrate. Um, I, I lost my train of thought here, but certainly, Charlie, you should uh, hang up your communistic beliefs. You're no longer, uh, you know, the 60s are over. Um, or maybe you're old enough to be in the 30s, from the 30s. I don't know. Uh, but um, I think that uh, this, this, what Charlie suggested, National Disarmament Day or at National Disarm, yeah, that's some really crazy nonsense. Because I mean, to celebrate a, a you know stealing people's property that they can use to defend themselves against, say, people who would want to come and steal their property, it's it's kind of it's you know. I, it, I'm curious if Charlie thinks that that should be a mandatory holiday and if there should be penalties for not participating in National Gun Confiscation Day or whatever the hell he called it. Um, I think that we should have, you know, in terms of like feast in the Catholic Church, I, I, I hope for the canonization of Father Isaac Hecker. That way we can have a St. Hecker's feast day and uh father hecker believed in freedom and he would be appalled at all the things charlie is talking about uh he would you know father hecker would support you know people celebrate uh you know worshiping peacefully and observing their cultures peacefully and if they want to engage with other people they do it on a voluntary and uh cooperative basis um and Father Hecker also thought that public schools were a threat to freedom. And uh, considering that uh, teachers unions um, are basically holding Chicago 
uh, public schools hostage. And, you know, this is the same teachers union that sent a contingent to the communist dictatorship of Venezuela. Um, I think Father Hecker was, was right in his assessment that, that public schools are un-American and just only exist to um, destroy what people have, have, you know, the culture that people have built. So perhaps uh, the church can exp uh, expedite uh, Father Hecker's canonization so we can celebrate Father Hecker's feast day and remember his wise words about getting the government out of education and um, you know freedom and Republican forms of democracy and government. Um, and you know, uh, okay, Justin, it's been about six minutes now. Oh, okay. All right, Alexa. Now I hear more about cracked hot three stay. Okay, uh, Alexa, you're next. If you want to rebut, uh, you've got the floor is yours. You got four minutes to so go ahead. Um, so I'm going to move away, I guess, from just kind of all the follow ups, and I'm just going to refer back to the original presentation by Charlie and the idea that I think the debate is that the government should have its own branch, like Department of Holidays. Like I said, he his presentation while interesting, was basically just him telling us that what he didn't like about the current holidays and what they should be replaced with and, you know, using a bunch of very, like, device, not very effective, like, photos of, you know, here's a socialist country doing something nice and here's people in the U.S. getting drunk, like, as though there's no, like, bad stuff as though there's no drunk people in china right now or anything like just i, I don't know i mean that that anno i'm annoyed by how like bad of an argument that is just to select a couple pictures and say yep everybody's getting drunk in america and everybody in china is you know participating in cultural enrichment um but yeah it's like okay so um, they weren't yeah, fake photos. Like, they weren't fake. No, but here's the thing is that like, and, and again, you can't for, you know, if, if you don't, the government can't force people to do <laughs> culture enrichment. They can't force people to, you know, do, I guess, what they find meaning in something, whatever that even is. Um, and I, I don't think we need an entire department just to decide what holidays there are. I, you know, and... Really, I mean, do you really want, like, like a, a, all of my, I guess all the socialists, communists here, do you really want Donald Trump deciding what is and isn't a holiday? <laughs> like, why do you want politicians to say, mm -hmm, this is what we're, you know, this is what we're celebrating and this isn't, you know, to put out a list at the end of the year? Because I, I just, you'd probably have a shifting, you know, between Democrats and Republicans, a shifting list of like holidays of honoring people that you know are on their side that may or may not have actually contributed. Piety. LGBTQ uh, Day. Let's get Biden to quit. It, it just, I mean, it, plus, like, I don't know. I mean, you know, people have weekends off of work. People aren't working, you know, twenty four seven like most would want you to believe. I say, go out there. And make your own meaning, whether it's a national holiday or not. My work has personal holidays, so I can take off, you know, a random Tuesday. And whether I want to, you know, get really drunk or if I want to just, you know, read, I, I, I don't know, feminist theory all day. I can, that that's my choice. And that's, you know. You're opposed to the community? Celebrating I, I, together? I, no, I mean, I'm saying that people can make their own meaning. Communities can get together on a random Tuesday or a random Saturday and say, hey, let's celebrate the community. You know, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the holidays you mentioned with like, you know, national, I don't know, hot dog day or whatever. Like those aren't actual holidays that have been declared by the government. Those are just some dumb things that people made up and have run with. Like there, there's no official stuff. I can... I'm just going to say it right now. Okay, let's declare tomorrow will be National 
you know, Spike Cohen commenting on the ATF page on Facebook. You know, so you want a holiday? Do you want a holiday so everyone can go to a liquor store and get drunk? No, I want people to choose what they there. want to do, sir. And and also, I don't think it's your turn to speak. Just, I mean, like, you can't. The government can't force people what to do, and it's not their business to. Like, if you're not harming anybody, then why bother? And like I said, do you really? Is Donald Trump really the best? Like I said, do you really want Republicans or Republicans? Do you really want Democrats deciding what is and isn't celebrated? I, I just think it's not the government's place. I don't think the Constitution says anything about it being the government's place and having to form a branch, you know, of government in an entire department, which, like, how long does it really decide the government to decide what is and isn't a holiday or something like that? It, that just seems like a waste of resources to me, you know, when we could be fun, you know, just, yeah, huge waste of resources. I, that's all. Okay, now we have a couple more. I know I'm not on camera, but uh, Ernie Norman or Dan or Steve, any of you guys want to say anything or shall we just let Charlie wrap up the night? We'll call it. All right, well, go ahead, and If you want, you want to go set, say something more? Yeah. Okay, okay, David. All right, uh, David, go ahead and get up there. I'll put the mic back on. Uh, go ahead. And then let's just, if you want to sit down up there, that's fine. Go ahead and we'll uh, get you started early. We'll get you after we get David and Andy here. So go ahead, David. And uh, we got you on camera. Go ahead. All right. Who decided, you said that um, perhaps people should be punished for not having a holiday. It's with what? If they don't choose not to celebrate a holiday, were you, gonna, were you planning to put them in the stocks or the pillory? Were you planning to suggest maybe trial by combat or trial by ordeal? No, people shouldn't be forced to do anything. And America is, is not like that. You're free to celebrate a holiday or not. If you dislike, if, if somebody prominent dies and you don't want to put out the flag for that, you don't have to. So I'm sorry, I don't buy the argument that people should be forced to celebrate a holiday. I don't care whether they call it Hanukkah or Christmas or whether they call it some of the holidays that you came up with. People shouldn't be forced to celebrate a holiday, period. End of story. Okay, Andy, you ready? Okay, Andy's gonna go to hand up hand up hand the microphone off to Andy. All right, just let's have a let's all get drunk day. Yeah, what? <laughs> right. Okay. That's frequently happens anyway. <laughs> yeah, let's all get drunk day. You're gonna go after you're gonna go after uh after Andy's done here. So he's getting his notes together and we'll have him up. Next, he needs about four, four to five minutes. And so, Andy, uh, when you're ready, um, hang on here. Let me get you on the camera. Okay, Andy, go okay, ahead. Can everybody hear me? Uh, I like Charlie's suggestion of some new uh, different holidays we would celebrate. So I have a modest example here. I would like to have a day celebrating Americans who tell the truth. On one day, people would get together and tell the truth, not bullshit, or not criminally insane bullshit, which is crib. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be carrying a sign that says, a lot three feet around me is a no crib zone. I'm not going to tolerate criminally insane bullshit anymore <laughs> for the rest of my years. So if we have a holiday for, incidentally, this is a website, Americans Who Tell the Truth, ORG. And there's famous people that have unimpeachable credentials, like Rosa Parks is in there, but David Ray Griffin passed away on December 1st. I'll bet most of you are unfamiliar with the work of Professor Griffin because he wrote 50 books in his lifetime, 50, 51 books on uh, theology, uh, how people come to believe mythology. Uh, his, his studies were religious until he retired. And then in 2004, he started looking at the evidence that the official story sold by the media for 9-11 was false. So uh, I'm, there's anybody that wants one, uh, I brought a two-page summary. I was on um, a website called Global Research for Dissident Voice. Those two reported the death of Griffin. But uh, Griffin was, he had best-selling books his whole life up until 
2007 when his, his fourth or fifth book was called The New Pearl Harbor. And he was nominated along with the 9-11 Truth Movement for two years, representing the 9-11 Movement and nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. That was totally blacked out in the United States. So, so, no, I'm not through yet. Okay, 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 I'm sorry. So, um, on, on National Tell the Truth Day, people could celebrate, you know, uh, famous people. Uh, here's, here's some suggestions of books that would be game changers if they were read and widely accepted by people as the truth that it is, rather than conspiracy theories. David Ray Griffin wrote uh, 12 books on 9-11. Bill, Bill McKibben, these are all people in that uh, American to Tell the Truth site. Incidentally, uh, people don't realize that Dwight Eisenhower was one of the great socialists of our time. Dwight Eisenhower today would be right next to Bernie Sanders with affordable health care, affordable education, uh, highways that are free for everybody, uh, not just uh, owned and operated by uh, billionaire predators. You could look back uh, to where this all started. In 1982, there's a book called Reagan, God, and the Bond. That describes the five-year plan to build two trillion dollars for the hardware, finance it, build it, deploy it around the Soviet Union on both sides, and then launch our missile in spring of '87 and fulfill Bible prophecy. Ronald Reagan was being coached by people that taught America goes to glory winning World War III. Those many of those people are in the the, the, the crazed right wing side of the Republican Party today talking about uh, we have to bring on Armageddon. We'll get a whole new plan when Jesus returns, but this one has to be destroyed first. That's the thinking of many of these crazies that recently got elected in Congress. But this is not in the news, so you would not know this. Since at the top of the list of books that are affordable every year, there's another one coming out. Uh, I think it's the 44th year of Censored News, Project Censored. It's called uh, State of the News. Uh, State of the World News or something. I don't know the exact title. We'll see it when it comes out December 6th. But uh, there's a book called Into the Buzzsaw by Christina Borges in 2004. It talked about how journalists get fired and blackballed and sometimes killed in America for trying to tell the truth on certain subjects that the billionaire predator owners don't want us to know about. Of course, uh, recently, two recent books that are excellent about what's going on in the world Naomi Klein, the Canadian writer, wrote a book called This Changes Everything. And Naomi Wolf, another longtime investigator, wrote a recent book called uh, The Bodies of Others. And that one describes the global shutdown that happened way too early with the COVID crisis. So if anybody wants any references on any of these things, uh, please feel free to contact me through the college. If you can come in person and exchange uh, books, papers. Uh, we used to exchange information all the time in person when college was meeting. I would like to see us get back to that. But in any case, if you want to know what's going on in the world, get off of Facebook and start looking at Common Dreams, Truth Out, and Buzz Flash. Those three websites are reader supported. There's no advertising, and uh, it's hard to find articles on those sites that aren't backed with high credibility, uh, solid references. I haven't found any propaganda on any of those three sites. Common Dreams, Truth Out, and Smirking Chimp. Incidentally, for those who don't know, Smirking Chimp was named after George W. Bush. That site was formed with half a chimp's face and half a Bush's face as a logo. <clears throat> and it's been up and running uh, since Bush stole the White House. So. Um, um, as far as voting goes, everybody should watch and tell your friends to watch. Download it. It's the movie on voter suppression, how they're just they're purging hundreds of thousands of people off the voter rolls in uh, African American and Democratic areas in the South so that truly insane people, criminals masquerading as Republicans, can get elected. I mean, it's, it's a cesspool right now. So, we have to deal with. We can't just pretend like somebody said, oh, well, maybe I won't go vote or maybe it's too hard. Uh, we all have to try to vote in every state as much as we can. And 
support people all over the country. Thank you. Okay, hand me the mic, Andy. All right, tell the truth. All right, uh, next we're going to have Ernie Norman go. You got something to say, Ernie? Tell the truth. I, I do. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Ernie. That's great. I kind of agree with it with Andy on having a tell the truth day, except I think it should be 365 days a year. However, that would take major cultural change in our politics and our business and our personal lives. And, you know, that'll, that'll take a while to have that happen. Um, <laughs> the reason that I apologize, I did not make it for the talk and I'm sorry I didn't, but I can listen to the recording if I want to. And I, I get a sense uh, of what was going on. Uh, my, problem i have some problems with holidays first of all oh i enjoy them believe me the more the better but uh i am i object to the fact that uh i am forced into religious holidays even though i'm not a religious person and and believe me i enjoy christmas i enjoy christmas eve and i enjoy uh the special meals we have on easter and all this kind of thing but I, I don't want uh, religious groups telling me when I'm going to celebrate and take time off. Uh, we need to look at two aspects of holidays. Number one is, as an employee, do you get time off, especially time off which you get paid for? That's one aspect of a holiday. The other aspect of a holiday is uh, the uh, inavailability of services. Okay, on certain many holidays, you can't have government services, government offices closed. Uh, and this usually the banks close on the same. You don't get banker services. Some businesses close. So there's a denial of services which occurs when you have holidays. And and that's, that's just the, the internet, Ernie. Use the what internet. The, huh? The internet never closed. All the time, Charlie. Well, well let, let, me, let me make my talk here, Charlie. And, and yes, I grant you that, for example, bankers' holidays, you can usually bank online, government holidays. Sometimes you can four hours a day. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Thank you, Charlie. Charge those minutes to Charlie, please. Not to me now. Uh, okay. 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 So, so there, but there are denials of services on, on holidays, some things that you cannot do. And, and that's all fine. I think what we should have is a more flexible system, especially with large employers and governmental employers, whereby, when a person hires on, they specify what days they want to take as holidays. They're, uh, they, they negotiate as you negotiate one week, two weeks, three weeks vacation. You, you negotiate or perhaps there will be uh, some Department of Labor standards or some union standards as to how many holidays you get. Not necessarily which ones, just how many. And then you, you determine up front which ones you want to take. Then the business looks at those figures for all their employees and if some critical number, such as 20%, it might be for some 30%, might be 50 or 60% for other businesses of their employees are going to take that day as a holiday, then they may close, okay? And businesses will have uh, 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 guidelines as to how many holidays they can take and close their businesses uh, because of lack of, of employees. It's, it's a, a little bit of a complex system but it's very flexible and it would be much fairer. And now that we're in a country that we have a lot more religious groups and a lot more uh, uh, issues that we want to celebrate, it would be more uh, sensible to let people pick which days they want to take off and, and uh, not necessarily take off the days which uh, other people would, would want them uh, to take off. And now this apply, this works well with... Uh, Bigger companies with smaller companies uh, it would probably be a negotiating thing between employers and employees. And for self-employed people, they take what holidays you want when they want. So it's a uh, it's a question of making sure that that services that are necessary. Now there are no holidays for certain critical services for fire, hospitals, police. They three you know they have to be available twenty four uh, uh, twenty four or three sixty five. And, and they generally are. This is generally has been worked out. So that's just the thought that I have. It's, it's kind of a labor issue, which unions and, and, uh, and employee groups and employer groups, uh, I think, should work out to making the system more flexible. It's already flexible. in every union contract. What's that? 
It's already in every union contract. What, what's in every union yeah. contract? It's scheduling holidays. I've written it many times. Schedule who schedules who gets to schedule the holidays? It gets the procedures for scheduling holidays. Rotates it among senior employees. Okay, so, so in other words, language. yeah, you're no, that you're you're covering a different part of the issue, uh, Charlie. Oh. You're covering. Yes, you are. You're covering the part of who does the work, who does the critical work on holidays. In other, isn't that what you're talking about? Yes, okay. Some people have to stay and work on Christmas contracts. Huh? There's all What's kinds that? of existing language in contracts right now. I negotiate them, all kinds of methods. So can I go in there, go go in there and say that I want to take daffodil day off? Is it's, that in the contract it's in all any kinds form? Of procedures that are negotiated. Yeah. Well, fine. That's good. I'm glad that there are. And but many have personal days. Yes. Many it's Charlie, personal what days. basically I'm as an employee, people. excuse me. Let me make a point here before my time runs up. Uh I am forced as an employee of almost all companies and government uh, jobs to take Christmas as a day off. Maybe I don't want to take Christmas off. Maybe I want to work in Christmas and take some other days off. Is that in the contract? Can I can I refuse to take Christmas off and, and get another day on under these contracts, Charlie? That's the point I'm trying to make. Employees should be able to decide what holidays they want to take. Okay. From your from time, the your time, Ernie. All right. Well, I'm I'm basically finished, Charlie. Unless you want to argue some your more. Your time. <laughs> Thank you very your much. Time. <laughs> I'm not supposed to speak. No, you're not. But that's never stopped you before, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get just get just on my Go ahead. All right. Um, I forgot the one else. All right. Uh, okay, uh, Justin, you want to say one more thing real quick? Then we'll have Charlie wrap up. I think Andy's also got a quick announcement for us. So Justin, if you want to say something, go ahead real quick. Yeah, I just want to. Um, I just want to list off a couple ideas that I have for for holidays um milton friedman's birthday ludwig von mises's birthday friedrich hayek's birthday uh, i already said frederick Douglass's birthday but we can also do frederick bastia's birthday we can do gary johnson's birthday <laughs> We can do uh, Tim Bolger's birthday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we can do. Uh, we can. We can do. Um, we can do. We can do a, a celebration that commemorates the fall of the Berlin Wall. We could do a, uh, a a celebration that commemorates the fall of the USSR. We can. We can. Uh, do a celebration that uh, that celebrates the uh, victims, uh, or not? You know, doesn't celebrate, but remembers the victims of of communism. Maybe we can do that on May first. Um, and uh, we should maybe get rid of Labor Day and call it uh, call it Capitalist Day, okay, but you still get the day off. All right, Justin, we got to move on. Andy's got a quick announcement, then we got to let Charlie wrap up. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, here's the mic. There's the mic. In the new year, uh, my brother and I are going to start uh, periodically publishing a new series of articles the, under the title of the, the 3007 series, 30 over 7. That means it, to understand this, you need a 30% open mind and a seventh grade education. The evidence is so overwhelming and documented that there's no debate. And so we're going to be publishing one page summaries of huge databases of evidence on a variety of issues that have been covered by censored news for the last 30 years, but are still blacked out by the mainstream press. So if you want to pick up some of those uh, flyers weekly, uh, come to the college in person. Thank you. All right. Charlie, you got the last word. 
Okay, I'm going to take each of you in turn here. Uh, Tim, uh, a large segment of the United population does not recognize the birth of the deity, uh, nor do they feel it merits a celebration of any kind. Uh, I think you'd like to have inclusion. Do you know the word inclusion? I would think that a holiday, essential feature of a holiday would be that it would have some sort of maximum appeal to the population. Certainly uh, not to diminishing one segment of, of religious adherence. Uh, that's not inclusion. Uh, also, if you wanna have multinational day, I, I don't know why you would have a celebration, celebrate the sweatshop, uh, I guess maybe you could, you could have everybody buy something made in a sweatshop day, up by <laughs> child labor. Anytime we go shopping, that happens, Charlie. Yeah, you're right. You're right on that one, Ernie. Thank you. Uh, but anyhow, so much for Entrepreneur Day. Uh, multi -day. Now, Peter Drucker, I never, man, I never, not once. Did I indicate any mandatory celebration in any fashion, except when we got into discussing uh, voting? So your efforts to try to find fault with me are totally misguided. I was a volunteer for 10 solid years uh, and on days off at the uh, Chicago Historical Society. And I honestly cannot recollect anything on President's Day, maybe we had a guy dressed up like Abe Lincoln walking around, but that was about it, you know. Nothing ever happened of any significance. I also said to get rid of Halloween. I, I don't know if that came across. I didn't see any merit to it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I showed how there, there's some rather dark elements, uh, these Everybody likes scary stories, but they seem to have crossed the line on that. Um, now, also Santa Claus, uh, if you feel that an authority figure who rewards you if you obey is something we should be inculcating children with, then I guess you like Santa Claus. Why don't you have a big obey, obey day? And if you obey and do what you are told, you will be rewarded with material items made in one of Tim's sweatshops in China, probably. But Christmas, I gave a talk on how Christmas, if we continue celebrating it, will lead to extinction of the human species. So I think it's gotten way beyond its original intent. Um, Let's see what else here. Uh, regarding, um, uh, yeah, there was voting. Um, Mr. Tucker, uh, I was encouraging a disarmament day in which we look at the military budget. And right now, Veterans Day, all I see are documentaries glorifying warfare and combat. And I don't think we should be celebrating a day that uh, seems to be making warfare a, a positive human activity. Perhaps if people focus on a day as to past military endeavors, were they correct or not correct? Uh, and the military appropriation, and most importantly, disarmament. We have a nuclear arsenal that is threatening the species as we speak. And I see nothing wrong with a holiday aimed towards pacifism. I'm a pacifist and I have no problem declaring that. And I think the pacifist, a day of pacifist community is much preferable to these days in which we focus on conflicts. Hey, and Charlie, that's... how do you reconcile being a pacifist with uh, using violence to break strikes? 
Uh, well, I'll get into that. So let Karl me Marx advocated look. for violence in order to achieve communism. He kind of said it was necessary and he enjoyed it. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, sources I, the Communist Manifesto. I never discussed the Communist Manifesto. You got less than two minutes left. Charlie. All right, uh, I better get through this. Alexa, uh, every day reason I gave an analysis of the holidays, I'm sorry, was pure and objective in every respect. And I stand by that. And in an inherent function of government to control the hours of work, and that includes hours of work and hours of non-work. It is an inherent function of government, the United States Department of Commerce. It has regulated hours of work since 1938, and they do so every single day of the week, uh, the regulated. I know I'm an enforcer as a union official. Um, the, uh, let's see, uh, truth, hey, yeah, I, to tell the truth, I, I, no one would object to that. Objective Truth Day would be a good one. And Ernie, there are all sorts of languages incorporated in contracts regarding staffing, uh, issues regarding holidays. They get all kinds, I give whatever they want in the company or the union. Uh, you can craft the language. There's coverage that is needed so that you do not have to close. Uh, one of the things, as a matter of fact, most employers do not want to close. The, the issue is they don't want to close the factory because you don't make any money if a factory is closed. So all sorts of personal holidays, they will agree to but they do not want the operation closed because they have capital invested in the operation. It's like we had a printing company, my partner and I, we never wanted the presses to shut down 24 seven. We wanted them running because that's how we, the profitability, but there's all kinds of contract language that you can come up with for staffing of essential services, things like that. I used to have to do it for coverage. I had a public library that had to be kept open so many hours per week. I required a staff every month. We had to arrive at a compromise and how to have coverage <laughs> in that regard. A lot of time, Charlie. All right, that's it. So thank you very much. I hope, you, oh, by the way, all of this, if you go to the top, Okay. For the College of Capitalism's website, my recommendations for holidays, the PowerPoint's right at the top. And it is only the second half where my recommended holidays, All right. uh, you can click on it. We're going to conclude tonight's festivities. We've got to get going. Uh, Charlie, you want to take the Zoom controls? Or Justin, do you want to take the Zoom controls over so you guys can get this discussion going? Yeah, I gave it to Justin. Justin, you mind taking over the Zoom, becoming host? Okay, Justin, yeah, what's up? I'm gonna make you host now because we gotta get going at the restaurant and observe so you guys can continue to argue for a while. I'm gonna make you host. Yeah. Okay? All right, your host. We're gonna be out of here. You guys have a good night, okay? Happy holidays. Happy holidays, Charlie. So where do you find this priest? Um, I'll stop the recording.